Hi, Sirsa. I am so glad that Bear in the Big Blue House is still such a loving memory for you and that you still have fond memories of visiting the Big Blue House, especially those moments when Bear and Luna would get to talk to each other. Well, Lynn Thigpen was an extraordinary person, not just an extraordinary actress, but an extraordinary person, a great colleague and a great friend whom I loved. In fact, I wrote a whole chapter about her in my memoir, which I would like to read to you now. This chapter is called, Ah, There She Is. I want to take a moment to talk about Lynn Thigpen. If you only know Lynn Thigpen as the soothing voice of Luna the Moon, then you don't know who Lynn Thigpen was. Lynn was a consummate actress in movies, television, and theater. Take the time to look her up on imdb.com. And the range of performances this woman did just for TV and film is amazing. Then head over to broadwayworld.com for stage credits. Lynn was a working actor, someone who isn't the star, but has a long and productive career, earning a reputation of consistent quality and the respect of peers, producers, and directors. That was Lynn Thigpen. I had seen and always liked the surreal movie, The Warriors, the 1979 film based on the 1965 book about a street gang framed by a rival gang in their need to survive the night, getting back to their home turf of Coney Island. It's a bizarre movie set in New York City at night, yet there is no one, and I mean no one, other than the Warriors and other gangs. And these gangs are straight out of a comic book, dressed like baseball players and others wearing top hats. And the narrator is the voice of the DJ, a sort of omnipresence throughout the movie. But you never see her face, just her lips and the microphone. But it's her voice that captures your attention. It wasn't until years later that I found out that the DJ was Lynn. When I asked her about it, she said it was one day to shoot, and by one day meaning a couple of hours, since the camera and lighting was set up. But the DJ is the character you remember the most. Barry and Luna always had conversations at the end of the day, the big picture moment, as creator Mitchell Kriegman called it. But it wasn't the first time a character of mine and a character of Lynn's had a conversation. When I worked on the PBS series, The Puzzle Place, my character was Leon, a precocious seven-year-old from New York City. Once when we did a remote shoot of Leon at his school science fair, Three little girls asked me how old Leon was supposed to be. Seven, I said. No, they said, having seen the show. He's nine. He acts nine. As a dad, I now realize what they meant. In the episode I wrote titled The Mystery of the Fabulous Hat, Leon decides to solve the mystery of the missing hat just like his hero Sherlock Holmes. The caretakers of the clubhouse, the Peace Police, even dress him up, deer stalker hat and all. His best friend Ben, played by one of my dearest friends, Jim Martin, wants to help. So Leon hires Ben to be his Dr. Watson. The peace police accommodate with an appropriate outfit for Ben. But when Ben does a better job of finding the clues, Leon's ego gets the better of him and he fires Ben. Now working alone, Leon can't find any clues and needs advice. The puzzle place had this contraption called the Weebus, a huge computer with a large screen capable of contacting anyone in the world for a video chat. Before Zoom, there was the Weebus. He goes to the Weebus and says, Weebus? And yes, before Alexa and Siri, there was the Weebus. Weebus, please call the chief of the Acme Detective Agency. Instantly on screen pops up the chief herself from the PBS series where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Played, of course, by Lynn Thigpen. The chief then explains to Leon that sometimes everyone, including detectives, needs help. She remembers her first case and she needed help and called for some just in time. Who was it? Leon asks. I just told you, she replies, just in time. Did I mention I wrote this episode? Leon then thanks her and apologizes to Ben, and together they solve the mystery. It was very rare for two PBS shows to do a crossover. The only time I remember is when Big Bird appeared in the neighborhood of Bank Believe on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and Fred Rogers dropped by Sesame Street. 
we shot the Leon half of the bit first. Then when they were back in production that fall, Carmen San Diego shot Lynn's half with my playback as a guide for her timed responses. And it edited together perfectly. So how did this consummate actress of stage, screen, and television become the moon? Well, first, Mitchell Kriegman called me and asked me what a good name for the moon would be. Immediately, Luna popped into my head. When he was casting the voice of Luna, I instantly recommended Lynn, remembering her as the chief and the voice of the DJ from the Warriors. I told Lynn about her chief's chat with my Leon when she came to the audition, and she remembered. We sat in an office at the Henson townhouse and read one of the chats that occurs at the end of the show. And that was it. Mitchell and I both knew that this was not just the voice, but the essence of what you'd imagine the moon would be talking to you. That tone of warmth and wisdom you'd expect from an entity that has literally seen it all. Lynn and I would meet at a recording studio and record six conversations for six upcoming episodes at a time. I loved the time of those recordings because I got to have my own chats with Lynn. And not just about show business, but what was going on in her life, like the noise from the limelight, the church converted into a nightclub in the Tribeca section of Manhattan, and right across the street from her loft, Friday and Saturday nights being the worst. On Bear, we chewed six episodes in two weeks. The parts of each episode for Shadow's stories and the end of the show for the chats with Luna were all reserved for the Friday of the second week, dubbed Chroma Key Day what you now know as blue screen and green screen. Lynn and I would record Bear Luna's lines prior to this. On that Friday, all the shadow stories with shadow stop, shot against blue screen, and in the afternoon, move over to the attic set and shoot all the endings with Lynn's voice played back. Once due to scheduling, we couldn't get to the recording studio, so Lynn came into the studio and said the lines live, while Peter Lynn's lip-synced with the moon in real time. Not an easy task, even after rehearsing. Bear in the Big Blue House wrapped production in March of 2002. Lynn Thigpen died suddenly on March 12, 2003 of a cerebral hemorrhage. I was invited to speak at the memorial held for her at the Cherry Lane Theater in Greenwich Village. Many people took to the stage to reflect on Lynn and her contributions to acting and stories about her. The best was from Michael E. Knight, who portrayed Tad the Cad Martin on the ABC daytime soap opera, All My Children. I was the last speaker. I took to the stage to introduce the clip of the final show of Bear. The premise, which I suggested for the last show, was that Bear's friends think he's leaving and they want to show him how much they appreciate him and do a grand this is your life type of song called thank you bear it turns out to be a misunderstanding and bear won a contest and gets to take five of his friends to stay at the grand sequoia lodge in sequoia city the clip was from the last scene of the show with bear stepping out onto the hotel room's balcony what a coincidence and sees luna who's surprised to see him not at the big blue house he explains what happened and she tells him how nice that he feels so appreciated. Then she adds, one life touches many others bear. We should make sure that each life we touch, we touch in as positive a way as we can. We don't often want something good and wonderful to end, like a beloved TV show or even a gifted actress. And we look for a huge reason behind it as comfort, but it just happens, just because. What we need to always remember is that some things and some people will live on in our memories and in our hearts. And as Luna said, we should make sure that each life we touch, we touch in as positive a way as we can. Lynn Thigpen did that in so many ways. Thank you for the chats, Lynn. And thanks for listening, Sirsa.